Greetings Saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. Brought to you by Eternal Values Ministries dot com. And we're continuing our study here in the uh, NIV. Comparing it with the King James. And we were in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we were looking at the verse... In verse 13, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, because to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So God had from the beginning chosen us. Let me find this NIV on here. I want to share this with you, with you in, uh, let's see, verse 13. Now here, now some of, the, some of them are different for some reason. I go to different websites and um, the NIV reads a little different. This is the Blue Bible, which is a, a blue letter Bible, which is a very good uh, website for studying the scripture, the concordance and everything. Uh, it says here, but we, in the NIV, but we ought always to thank God for you brothers and sisters loved by the Lord because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. So this one here, God chose you as first fruits. It leaves out from the beginning, but the King James does, and it has to do with predestination, Ephesians 1, as we did in a previous video. And so, there's a footnote here by First Fruits, and the footnote says, some manuscripts say, uh, because from the beginning God chose you. So some say, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and belief on the truth. And this one here says, because God chose you as First Fruits, with the footnote. So, um, if you leave out from the beginning, or if you put it in, and you put a footnote there, that it's uh, that it also could be because God has chose you as first fruits. It, it brings in confusion. Which one is right? What's the truth? You know, like we said earlier, what's what's in? The, how do they know what the best manuscripts are, or so forth? Uh, we can't know because the originals are no place to be found, and no one ever saw them. So. Um, if you leave out from the beginning, then uh, you're hiding what this really means here, which is um, has to do with our salvation, has to do with the day of Christ, as opposed to the day of the Lord. The day of Christ is for believers. The day of the Lord is a wrath. He comes as a thief in the night. First uh, Thessalonians chapter five. The thief doesn't announce breaking in. He comes when you don't expect him. He don't want. He doesn't want to be caught. And so, again, in the King James, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Now, even if you uh, have in the NIV, God had uh, from the beginning chose you to be saved. It's different than chosen you to salvation. Uh, it's not it's it's not as forceful of God's plan in Ephesians 1 that he's chosen us before the foundation of the world actually to salvation that's what God's grace is all about all right um and as I finished up the last video we started out in, to go to Romans 9 and we were starting uh, in verse 1. I'm going to start now in verse 4, Romans 9. And we want to see what what is this about this election and God's uh, sovereign choosing of who gets saved from the beginning, before the foundation of the world. And he says here in verse 4, Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, 
who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. So everything, all the laws, the adoption, the covenants, the promises, everything wasn't given to Gentiles, to the nations, it was given only to Israel. And because you and me are grafted in to Israel, because God has broken down the middle wall partition and separated Jew from the Gentile, the law that would make the uh, Gentile an unclean dog. Even as far as Acts 10, Peter was rebuked for going into an uncircumcised man's house, Cornelius, and he told him how to get saved. He told him uh, about how Jesus died for them and everything, and the Holy Ghost fell on him and he started magnifying God in other languages, speaking in tongues. And, and day of the circumcision, the Jews were amazed because it happened just like it happened to them. And God making no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. That's the point of Paul's Gospel. And it's not just for this little section here of this dispensation that this is the body of Christ. This is where it's magnified. This is where the truth comes out. This mystery is revealed from the Apostle Paul, from God to the Apostle Paul. All right? But the body of Christ, anybody who was ever saved before the cross or after the cross has to be in the body of Christ. If you're not in the body of Christ, where are you? You don't belong to God. you got to be a member of the body of Christ. We've made this great difference between um, Jew and Gentile that they're completely separate and that a preacher of rapture has got to take place before we can go back to Israel and put them back under the law even, some teach. God help us. I mean, what did Christ go to the cross for? For nothing? So saints, um, we, we need to grasp what is going on here. So let's keep reading now. So everything's given to Israel and we've just been grafted in now. Uh, verse 6, not as though the word of God had taken non-effect, for they are not all Israel which are Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In Isaac, not in Ishmael or somebody else, but in Isaac, and Isaac to Jacob, and Jacob's name is changed to Israel, who had 12 sons, there are the 12 tribes of Israel, and these are the ones he's speaking about. But he's saying that all Israel is Israel. And what he means is that you can be born a Jew, but if you're not circumcised in your heart, how can uh, you're not saved and you don't belong to God? You don't get in, you don't get into the body of Christ, you don't get into heaven, you don't you're not righteous with God because you practice Moses' laws, but because you're trying to be a good person. You gotta be circumcised in the heart. The circumcision in the private parts at the beginning was a type. Now in the new covenant he shows what it's about about getting your heart circumcised so you can believe, your ears circumcised so you can hear. That's what he's talking about. Alright, so, neither because they are the seed of Abraham, verse 7, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. The unsaved, whether they're Jew or Gentile, they're not the children of God. But the children of the promise accounted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, not being born yet, that the purpose of God, according to election, his choosing, might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. That's what it means by grace are you saved. It's not of yourself. It's not of works. It is the gift of God. It's by grace through faith. Before the foundation of the world, you've been chosen to salvation. That's the grace of God, saints. These, these people aren't even born yet. You and me weren't even born yet. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? You see, right away, the thought comes to us, something's wrong here. Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. 
For he said to Moses, I will have mercy in whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion in whom I will have compassion. So then it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that show it mercy. For the scripture say unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore had he mercy in whom he had mercy, and whom he hardened as he hardened it, thou wilt say unto me, Why does he yet find fault? For who had resisted his will? I mean, nobody nobody can resist him. He, uh, how, can you, how can you blame us? How can you find fault with us? How can you judge us for our sin? Verse 20, Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Had not the potter power over the clay of the same lump, lump of clay, to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Is God allowed to do that? What if God willing to show his wrath, God wants to show his wrath, his anger, his righteous indignation against sin. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known throughout the earth, even to 2015, endured with much long suffering, patience, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Pharaoh and them in Egypt were fitted to destruction. The ones that don't believe are fitted to destruction. This is God's word. What are you going to do with it, saints? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore or before prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Wow. You know, when I read this, this, this was difficult for me. But I had to come to grips that, um, am I going to believe God's word or not? You know, I tried to get out of this, squeeze my way, squirm my way out of this, that this means something else. Uh, but it's, it's quite plain, isn't it? That he chooses who he wants. He's chosen us before the foundation of the world. Others are fitted to destruction. See, when judgment comes, the unbeliever will only be judged, he can only be judged, for the sins he committed. If you and me never got saved, that's how we would be judged, by the sins we committed. We're not going to be judged because uh, of Adam. The whole human race falls into sin because of Adam. But we'll judge for our own sins. I'm not judged for my father's sins, or my son's sins, or my wife's, or some of my neighbor's. Me, myself. I am responsible for my actions as a person, and I will stand before God and give an account. Now, as a believer, a sinner who deserves to go to, a believer who used to be a sinner who deserves to go to hell, what happened? The believing in Christ by, by faith, trusting in Him, cleaned my record because Jesus paid the price with His own blood, with His own life, and He rose the third day. Hallelujah. And so I'm clean. And not only is my police record clean in front of God, but he imputes, he accounts to my account, to my bankrupt uh, uh, moral account. Completely bankrupt. He imputes, he accounts, he puts in there his righteousness. He gives it to me. So when God the Father sees me, he sees a believer who trusts him as Lord and Savior. He sees us through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, it is finished. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So saints, you can you can have confidence. You can know. You that don't know the Lord, you can know that you're saved if God has called you. Right? But you gotta you gotta come to Him. You gotta believe, and then God and God then will give you the uh, repentance. He'll give you the power and the will to start changing your life as you step out by faith to live for Him. This is God's way, saints. Well, I love you. This was our study, um, short study, but you can just, there's a lot on the internet, on YouTube and other places, uh, and books you can look at about the King James Version, the preservation of God's Word, and uh, the
the NIV and, and the, the ones those manuscripts uh, come from. Uh, it's, it's just uh, a lot of differences, especially on main points of Scripture. The deity of Christ, the virgin birth, and things like that. I love you, saints. God bless you. Till next time, we'll talk again.